What's going on, everybody? Spunky1991 coming to you guys for another video. I'm here to talk about my expectations for the Eagles 2019 season. My expectations for the you know, coming to the season were already very high, but due to things that happened this offseason, my expectations are even higher. Um, starting off, of course, we know that Deshaun Jackson is back in Philadelphia. Um, I'm very excited to see the uh, combination, the duo between him and um, Carson Wentz. Um, the Eagles released a video today of uh, Carson Wentz throwing a deep bomb to um, um, Deshaun Jackson. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing more of those, um, you know, in the season. I was, I'm, I'm hoping that we, we hear deep touchdown to Deshaun Jackson quite a bit this season. But talking about Carson Wentz, now you guys know how I feel about the whole Carson Wentz contract. You know, he got his contract extension, obviously. Um, you know, uh, this offseason he got his contract extension. He's now one of the highest paid quarterbacks in the league. Um, I don't I don't like the fact that we gave him this contract. I still don't like it. Uh, I know some people have been trying to, you know, you know trying to talk me into, um, you know, you know, see, you know, seeing that's a great, it's a great, you know, decision. But I'm sorry, guys. Right now, I just don't see it as a great decision. The only thing that's going to convince me otherwise that this was, a, you know, that this was a great decision is the way that Carson Wentz plays at the field. I'm just not changing my opinion on that one. Um, I, I, I don't like it. I felt like we should have waited another um, all season at least. You know, I would have said, I would have said, do his whole, his whole rookie contract. I would have said that, but. No, I, I felt I felt like at least one off season we should have waited to make sure that he could not only stay healthy but also um, he could deliver in the clutch and he could show that he could return back to that MVP form that he had in 2017. You know, the guy the guy that threw what 33 touchdown passes before getting hurt and still finished the season with the you know the most touchdown passes that season. So I, I, I wanted to see at least one year of him you know back back to being the Carson Wentz that we all know and love you know. You know, this is a guy that came off of two back-to-back, -back, you know, um, season in the injury. So, it is what it is, man. I don't, I don't like the fact that we paid him now, but obviously Roseman and, um, you know, Roseman, Jeffrey Lurie, Doug Pease, and they all saw, um, they all saw enough to convince them that he was, he was ready for a pay, you know, a payday right now. And obviously, with giving him that that contract, that re, re, you know, that reaffirms that he is definitely the guy, the, the franchise quarterback, the guy who. Um, you know that we that we have to get behind for many years to come. So, at this point, we're stuck with Carson Wentz. Now, my expectations for Wentz in 2019 were already high. They were, but now that he's being paid like a franchise quarterback, I expect him to play and uh, to, to play and uh, win games like a franchise quarterback. You pay those franchise quarterbacks to um to win the big game, man. Put the team on their back, on their shoulders. That's what you pay a franchise quarterback to do, and. Just being, just being, I'm just keeping it real, man. Carson Wentz has not really been put in that situation very much, and when he has been put in that situation, um, you know, he has not, he has not been very impressive, impressive to me when it comes to, you know, um, when, when are these, you know, these um, close games at the end. He just hasn't been impressive to me. But I'm hoping now that he got his money, that's even more motivation for him, man, to go out there and deliver as a franchise quarterback. Because if he doesn't, then that's not good. So. Crossing my fingers that Carson Wentz not only you no know, returns back to his MVP farm, stays healthy, but also delivers in the clutch. You know, deliver um, when 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 the game is online. I expect the guy being being paid 107 million dollars guaranteed. I expect that guy to put the team on his shoulders and lead the team to victory. So, I you know I, I do believe in Carson Wentz. I do love Carson Wentz. Um, just so you guys who think I'm anti Carson Wentz, that's not the case. I'm not anti Carson Wentz at all. I love the guy, man, I, and I still do believe in the guy. I just, you know, I, I'm, I'm just not, you know, I'm not one of those diehard Wentz fanboys who puts him on this pedestal where there's no, you know, there's no time you can be critical of him. I, I never understood that with some Eagle fans, man. They feel like you can never be critical of Carson Wentz, but obviously that's that's not me. You know, I'm, I'm going to criticize him when he plays, when, when he deserves it, when I feel he deserves it, and I'm going to give him his praise when I feel like he deserves his praise. I'm never gonna sugarcoat anything, man. I love the guy, and I hope that he goes out there and um, he proves that he was that that was the right decision to pay him right now. But go, but right now, guys, I'm just not a fan of that contract. And there, there's been you know some of y'all who have been trying to talk me into changing my tune my tune on that, but it's just not gonna change. 
But anyway, putting that putting that aside, now that Carson Wentz is paid like a franchise quarterback, I expect him to, to deliver and play like a franchise quarterback. You pay those franchise quarterbacks, those you know, the quarterbacks that um those big bucks who want to put the team on their shoulder and win. I expect Carson Wentz to be in the MVP conversation. I expect that before the contract. I expect him to return back to the MVP conversation. I say about roughly about thirty, a little bit over thirty touchdown passes in two thousand and nineteen. And you look at the weapons around him, man. There are absolutely no excuses with these weapons around him. It's unbelievable the amount of talent that he has around him. Starting off with the uh, the tight ends, you got Zach Ertz, and you got Dallas Goddard, you got Richard Rodgers. Uh, Dallas Goddard and uh, Richard, uh, excuse me, Dallas Goddard and uh, Zach Ertz. I expect those two to be one hell of a um, tight end, du- uh, a, t- a tight end duo, man. I expect both of those guys, man. You know, Dallas Goddard being a good blocker, good receiver. Um, Zach Ertz is not really that great of a, of a blocker, but the guy, as we all know, what he is, man. When it comes to um, when it comes to his receiving, man, the guy, the guy had the guy had a record-breaking year last year for tight ends. He has shown that he is one of the best, if not the best, tight end in the game right now. And I expect him to continue to be, you know, continue to put up big numbers, man. Uh, I think he will go down as the best tight end in the Eagles' history when it's all said and done. He's already, he's already, he already has a good start of it. Uh, him and Dallas Goddard, man, I expect both of those guys, man, to really be those security blankets for Carson Wentz when nobody's open downfield. You no, know, th- those guys that move the chains. That's exactly what Zach Ertz does. Move those chains. You no, know, th- those chains, man. Dallas Goddard, you know, last year he admitted himself that last year was his rookie year, and and of course he was learning the whole system, you know, learning the playbook. But another season, uh, but now he has a he has his rookie season behind him. I expect Dallas Goddard to, to take that next big move in his career, and I expect um, you know things just just to go up from here when it comes to Dallas Goddard. Um, going to the running backs, man. I love this. I love these running backs that we have, man. I absolutely love the you know, the group of running backs we got. Young, you no know, young guys, man. Of course, Jordan Howard, Corey Clement, uh, Miles oh, Sanders. Um, yeah, Miles Sanders, uh, Corey Clement. I already said Corey Clement, but I say it again. Yeah, Jordan Howard, Miles Sanders, Corey Clement. Um, maybe Wendell Smallwood. We'll see what happens with Wendell Smallwood. That number four spot's up for grabs. You got Josh Adams there as well. I would say Donnell Pumphrey, but I, I don't think Donnell Pumphrey is going to be on the roster. If he's going, if, if anything, he's going to be practice squad. Um, Boston Scott as well. I think Boston Scott as well is going to be a um, practice squad player. Maybe, maybe he he could he could sneak on the roster as a special teams contributor. Um, wide receivers, man. Obviously, the return of um, Deshaun Jackson. You got Deshaun Jackson. You got all Sean Jeffrey. You got Nelson Aguilar on the slot. Nelson Aguilar, I expect Nelson Aguilar to really benefit from Alshon Jeffrey and um, Deshaun Jackson on the outside. Deshaun Jackson is a speedy guy. Even even at his age now, he is still fast as hell, 32, 33 years old. Still fast as hell. Can still stretch the damn field, man. And unfortunately, we Eagle fans have, have felt that, you know, when he... You know, he, he's burned the hell out of us with the Redskins and the Buccaneers. I'm glad that he's now back on our side. I wasn't the biggest fan of bringing him back originally, you know, because of how he was before he um, left Philadelphia. But hearing the guy talk now, man, the maturity that he has, man, he definitely has. A, he definitely appears to have grown up. And I can't say anything bad about him, man. He, he's grown up, and as long as he continues to show that maturity, continue to teach these younger guys, man, Show him the ropes like like JJ Arcega White Side, man, those young guys. As long as he as long as he continues to show the you know, have the right attitude and show maturity, then I'm happy he's back, man. And you know, anything to help our team play even better, man. You know, him and Alshon Jeffrey on the outside are gonna be a nightmare for opposing um defensive coordinators. And like I said, Nelson Aguilar, the whole speculation of whether or not Nelson Aguilar will be will be you know back with the Eagles next year. I think he will be his last season, his last year of his rookie contract. Who knows what happens after that though? But he's he's gonna have a really big year, I expect. He's gonna benefit in that slot. Now that number four wide receiver, the number four wide receiver spot. If I had to take a guess right now, I would say it's going to JJ or Sega Whiteside. Um, the, the other guys who compete for that spot, I think, are that's in the competition. Of course, is uh, Matt Collins, who obviously missed all of last season with injury. Don't know exactly when, what's going on with him. And Shelton Gibson, the 2017 uh, wide receivers that we drafted, uh, out of, you know, out of that out of, out of that year's draft. So, I think right now that position is um, that number four spot is JJ Arcega Whiteside's spot to lose. 
I think he's he's been the most impressive. He's been he's been in camp. You know, he's been in our mini camp and our OTAs. Right now, that's his spot to lose as far as I'm concerned. And we all know that we drafted J.J. Arcega Whiteside to be the um, the eventual uh, replacement for um, for Alshon Jeffrey down the road. Jeffrey got many more years left in him, but I expect you know that's why they drafted him to be that you know that that jump ball guy, um, big body in the end zone, you know, big target for Carson Wentz in the end zone. And I, I expect uh, Arcega Whiteside to eventually you know um, you know become that guy. Once Jeffrey, once you no, know, once Jeffrey um is gone, which which like I said won't be anytime soon. Um, but yeah, the, all these weapons on offense for Carson Wentz, man. There's no excuse for Carson Wentz, man. You got so many weapons to your to your, you no know, um to your benefit right there, man. Utilize your weapons, man. Go out there and prove that you des- that you're worthy of that 107 million dollar guaranteed contract that you just got. I do believe in Carson Wentz, and I hope that he goes out there and he proves it. But like I said, man, my 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 tune on him being paid right now is not going to change until he goes out there on the field and um you no know, and shows why he got paid like that. Because if he does because if he doesn't go out there and show it, then there's nobody that can defend it. Plain and simple. I'm hoping I'm I'm, I'm crossing my fingers. I do believe in Carson Wentz. I'm not anti Carson Wentz. I'm just a um, a non biased, realistic Eagles fan. The guys coming off of two back to back season in the injuries. Hopefully that you know that's that's in the past, man. And he and he can prove that he's not injury prone. We shall see. The offensive line is of course the offensive line is um is is great as usual. You got the um the first round pick in 2019, Andre Dillard, learning behind one of the best ever at left tackle, Mr. Uh, Jason Peters. You got you got um, Jason Kelsey at center. You got Lane Johnson at right tackle. You got Isaac uh, Risnuski who's back with us, of course. You got him. You got Brandon Brooks. Um, hopefully he comes back sooner than later. But don't but but definitely don't rush Brandon Brooks back. Sorry about that, guys. Got interrupted by a phone call there. But yeah, I was talking about Brandon Brooks, man. Um, definitely don't rush him back, man. He's looking great. His recovery is great and everything. But definitely. Bring him back um, at the right time. Um, that's one thing I don't want the Eagles to do is rush him. Is rush him back, and I don't believe they will. Also, of course, you got Big uh, Big V, um, Big B, uh, um, yeah, Big V, Halapulavadi Vata. You got him there, of course. You know, offensive line, man. Overall, looks very, very good. There's no complaints whatsoever about the offensive line. One of the best in the league, and they continue to show year and year why they are, you know, constantly missing as one of the best um, offensive lines in the league. So when it comes to those, the whole offense, man, we got a great core there, great core guys. I expect the Eagles' offense in 2019 to be a top five. Uh, um, I would even say top three offense. If they're not at least a top five offense, that right there would be a humongous disappointment to me. With all the weapons that Carson Wentz has around him, there is no excuse for Carson Wentz. Plain and simple, he has to go out there and deliver, and I do believe he will deliver. Now moving on to the defense, man. Moving on to the defense. Um, the defense is absolutely stacked as well. If there's only if there's positions that I do have a little few question marks about is linebacker, but there's not really a big, but there's not really a big concern there. But starting off, um, I'm gonna start off with the linebackers. Like I was, I, I was starting talking about them anyway. Um, the the linebackers, of course, we know who the three stars are probably likely gonna be. Nigel Brown, we know Eagle fans, we know for many years when not when Nigel Brown what he brings to the table. Um, Zach Brown, we know him very well. Obviously, you know from from his years with the Redskins. Kamu Gruja Hill obviously played for us for quite a while. He's been primarily he, early in his career. He was primarily a special teams um, contributor. You know, even even served as our kicker on one time when Jake Elliott was out. Um, yeah, those three guys are more likely going to be the three starters, and I have no concerns about them at all. I have no concerns concerns about those three guys there. Kamu Gruja Hill has um, really stepped up and became a solid defensive player for us as well. So those three starting linebackers are what I'm expecting. Now, now my question, my question mark is the depth that we have here, because after Nigel Brown, Zach Brown, and Kamu Gruja Hill, is um, Paul Worlow, is um, is Nathan, is Nate Gary, is T.J. Edwards, is um, Joey Alfieri, is Alice Singleton, and L.J. Ford. Now the question mark is who those guys who who's going to step their game up and really um, you know show to the coaches what they got. I made a video about Nate Gary. He's really impressing. Um, our linebacker coach, um, Ken, uh, Clint, uh, Clint, <laughs> Ken, um, 
um, Flay Flay Joy. He's really impressing him, so hopefully he continues to do so. Um, yeah, all these guys, man, go out there, bust your ass, and um, definitely, you know, um, move yourself up on the depth chart. Linebackers, the, the biggest concern I do have, not the starters, but just the depth that we have there. Um, hopefully all these guys, man, that do make the team, man, we, we picked the right guys, and they are very, you know, the depth is, you know, we got we got solid depth, you no know, depth pieces of linebacker. Moving on to the defensive line, which I am most excited about when it comes to this defense. That that defensive line is absolutely stat. The return of Vinnie Curry. Um, of course, um, Timmy Jernigan, we re-signed Timmy Jernigan. Malik Jackson signed him out of free agency. Of course, the big man Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, Sharif Miller. Um, that D-line, man, I'm very, very excited about this D-line. Uh, Hassan Ridgeway, you know, can't forget about Hassan Ridgeway. Derrick Barnett, Derrick Barnett going to, what, his third year now? Um, I'm very excited about Derrick Barnett. This defensive line, man, the potential of this defensive line, man, to wreak havoc on opposing quarterbacks and running backs, man. Um, opposing offensive coordinators are not going to sleep well at night going against this defensive line. Absolutely stacked, man. I expect a lot of sacks. I expect a lot of pressures. I expect, you know, stuff in the run in the backfield. You no, know, um, I, I expect this defensive line to wreak havoc, which would definitely open, which would definitely help our younger, our young secondary a lot. You know, just so many, um, Josh Sweat, can't forget Josh Sweat, can't forget about him. Just so many, you no, know, just such a beefed up, stacked up defensive line. I think it's better than the 2017 defensive line. Going over to our secondary, starting off with the corners. Now, corners... I'm not the biggest Ron Darby fan. You guys know how I feel about Jalen Mills. But the guys behind him, the depth pieces, man, I love it. Um, Avante Maddox came out of nowhere last year and just made a name for himself. Same thing can be said by Craven LeBlanc. That kid came out of nowhere and made a name for himself. But then you got other guys like um, Sidney Jones, who I still believe in. I still believe in Sidney Jones. And I hope he has that breakout of the year next year. Um, Rasua Douglas, I love Rasua Douglas. I think he's better suited to be a... Um, I personally think he's better, you know, better suited to be a um, safety, but it, it is what it is. Now, speaking of safeties, of course, we signed, um, you know, um, you know, safety's pretty good. Of course, we got Michael Jenkins, who hopefully the whole situation with Michael Jenkins, it gets resolved very, very quickly, man. You know, hopefully that's not an issue, you know, going into, um, you know, going into training camp to get that situated. Um, of course, you got, um, you got McLeod there. You got Rodney McLeod. I think this will be Ronnie McLeod's last year in Philly, but we'll see about that. You got Sandejo over there, who, who we signed from the, from the uh, Minnesota Vikings. So when it comes to when it comes Volume to sec is at one hundred percent. When it comes to our second day overall, man, I, I I think I think we are pretty good and pretty stacked for the future overall. Um, no, if, no. My question mark overall would be um, who's, who's really gonna step their game up and um, you know. You no, know, take over those spots because we're not. You no, know, obviously McLeod. Like I said, McLeod's gonna be gone after this year. Um, more likely, um, you know, you no. Know, um, we we'll get we we'll get a deal done with Malcolm Jenkins. We will get that deal done. But um, you know, Jenkins is not getting any younger either. So we gotta make sure that we have um, you know, a good a good you know backup plan up there. You know, for you know the long term at safety. But right now, I feel okay with our safeties overall. So. You know, I, I feel very good over. Is at 80%. I feel very good overall about our, about our safeties. Um, uh, going over the uh, special teams, special teams. Jake Elliott, man, Jake Elliott, man, really got to step it up this year, man, because what? Jake Elliott. I like Jake Elliott a lot, man. I, I love Jake Elliott. I really do love Jake Elliott, but I have question marks about Jake Elliott. Like, the guy can boot it from 50 plus yards with no problem, but it's when you bring him up closer. When you bring him up closer. He tends to struggle with the easier, you know, 30 plus yard field goals. You know, 40, 40 and above, he, he, he you no, know, he, he's almost money, almost money, you know, making those deeper field goals. But he's got to, he's got to improve with the, um, the closer 30, 20 yard field goals. He has the points, man. That, that, that's killing us right there. His inability to, um, you know, convert the, um, the, the closer up field goals. So he's gonna be on the close, a very careful eye in 2019. This is a this is a story year with the Eagles, man. He's really got to go out there and um, you know, he, he's really got to go out there and um, you know, step it up, man. Definitely got to step it up. And <clears throat> if he want if he wants to be at the Eagles long term, he has to go out there and really step it up. Plain and simple, got to step up his game. We need him to be you know 
to convert the easy field goals and the, and the you know the, the the further out field goals, which he's been very good at overall in his career. Um, I forgot to talk about quarterbacks. You know, obviously Carson Wentz is a, is a guy, quarterback number one guy. But we got Subfield as number two. Of course, um, you know, we, we, we drafted Thorson. We drafted him in the fifth round this year's draft. Um, so that's what I think is going to be Carson Wentz, um, Subfield, and Thorson at number at number um, three. That, that, that would be my personal opinion of the three quarterbacks that we keep. You know, um, that that would be my personal opinion. But, um, yeah, I expect this to be a um, – a top five offense, um, t top three maybe. But if they if they if they're anything less than top five, then um, that's gonna be a big a big disappointment to me. Also, it's, um, it really you know I'm our, our uh, offensive coordinator. You guys know who I'm talking about. I don't like to mention that guy's name at all. That that fool man better better have a better year um, calling plays because 2018 was a disaster with him calling the plays. He better step up his damn game in 2019. If not, if, if this offense continues to be sloppy like it was throughout most of 2018, I will definitely speak my mind on that. You know, you guys know exactly who I'm talking about. I don't like to say his name because right now I'm not the biggest fan of his at all. But he better step his damn game up for sure. Because this offense with all this talent should be in the top five of when it comes to scoring points. Am I expecting him to be lights out right away? Absolutely not. It takes time with a team with newer players, man. It takes a little time for that chemistry to build up. So I understand that. I'm not expecting everything to be all, you no, know, from the, from the get go to be all, you no, know, to be all, um, you no, know, um, sunshine and roses. I guess I'm trying to say. Um, defense, defensive coordinator, of course, Jim Swartz, man. Jim Swartz, man. Overall, I, I give Jim Swartz a hand, man. You know, uh, we, we we were working with a um a uh, practice squad secondary. I think he held it together overall. I know a lot of people are not fans of Jim Swartz, but I like Jim Swartz a lot. I think he's a good defensive coordinator, and I think he's the right guy for the job. And I think with the, with the, with the uh, talent around his defense now, I think he's going to continue to show why he is uh, one of the better defensive coordinators in the league. And he may, he may even get a um, head coaching offer at the end of the season. We'll see. My rec, my prediction for the Eagles is 13 and three. I say 11 to 11 to five is the minimum. If they go, if they if they lose. More than five games, that's going to be a big shocker to me with this schedule. This schedule is definitely in their favor for sure. That's a very favorable schedule for the Eagles. So I expect 13 and 3. That, that's my prediction. 13 and 3, win the NFC East, and I expect them to um to win at least one playoff game. At least one playoff game. I don't think that's asked for a lot. Um, I, I can see this team going all the way, plain and simple. I'm not going to see them say Super Bowl, but what I'm saying is I could definitely see them, you know, um, being, you know, making a very deep playoff run. I honestly can see that. With the talent on this team, man, it would be very disappointing that if they don't make a deep playoff run. I definitely can see that happening. And I believe I believe in these guys, man. We got a great, talented um, roster here, man. I think they had the potential to be better than the 2017 Eagles. I said that before. But I strongly believe that they have potential to be better than the 2017 Eagles. But talk is talk, man. At the end of the day, it's what they go out there on the field and do. We shall see in 2019. Um, obviously, we got a while before training camp come up. Uh, training camp won't be is is well over a month away. But um, I'm very excited, man. I'm very pumped about this season. Uh, you know, I'm very very excited, man. And my expectations are very high. And I'm sure all you guys feel the same way. But let me know what you guys think about my uh, expectations for the season, man. Um, do you agree with what I said? If not, let me know why. Um, yeah. Thank you guys for your continued support for my, on my channel. I truly do appreciate it. If you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that comment button. Um, or hit, no, comment, whatever. Um, <clears throat> I'll, I'll be coming back soon with my um, standards prediction pretty soon. But as always, thank you guys for watching my channel, man. As always, go birds. Spunky Nights 9-1 is out of here. Fly, go fly. Peace.